Hey guys, she was on a one two three, aka John here. Welcome to episode number ten of the Milan career mode. Let's start this episode. I'm going to show you guys how the league table is looking right now as we enter the tenth episode of our series. We are two points off the of the Champions League places with a game in hand though on second place Napoli. As we head into the first game of three in today's episode against Torino away in Turin. As we go away to face uh, the uh, less successful Turin side, if you will. Uh, in an effort to catch up on their city neighbours, Juventus, as we uh, aim to continue our title challenge, I suppose. As you see, they were the best defensive team in the league so far. Anyway, this is the Torino lineup, including a certain Joe Hart, as you might as you might recognise. Uh, and uh, I put out the regular first eleven for this game against Turin. Uh, in on a bit of good, in a, not in the best form to be honest. Following a an, a home defeat, one 0 to Atalanta in the Coppa Nazionale which knocked us out of the competition, uh, causing us to fail to reach our uh, board objective. But we would get a chance here as Locatelli spreads the ball to Bonaventure, who cut inside onto his right foot, drilled the ball, and Baca, with the, with the shot, Carlos the Conquistador, didn't conquer much there as he rifles his shot off the bottom of the crossbar, and then Suso with the placed right left foot effort it fails to hit the target. As uh, two good opportunities there to try and break the deadlock, neither of which proved successful. We will get a corner here, though, swung in by Suso. It would be headed out by the uh, defender, and Bonaventura would head the return cross in, and, it, and he would head it past Joe Hart into the back of the net to make it Torino nil, Milan 1, as we take the lead away in Turin, and, uh, and we look to extend our unbeaten run in the league, following, of course, uh, a win and a draw in the league in the last episode against... Um, Bol I can't remember who it was. the first game was against. The second game was a draw against Cagliari. Cali I remember that. And it was Torino nil Milan one at half time. So following so following that, Locatelli here would find Baca, who play through Bonaventura, who would shoot, but just place it wide of the post with that left foot shot as it stays at 1-0. Torino would then win a corner, be swung in by Iago Falque, won by Kuchka, who would then win the ball again, sprint past the rest of the Torino defence, put him, putting himself through on goal, one-on-one -on -one with the keeper, Inside inside the Torino half now, still clear of the defenders as he slots and scores past Joe Hart to make it Torino nil, Milan two. As we double our lead away in Turin and look certain to be gaining the three points at the end of the day. Fantastic stamina here from the Slovakian Kuchka as he races past the Torino defense. Joe Hart came out to meet, but Kuchka slid it past him to uh, and the mount wearing the captain's armband in the absence of Montalivo. Makes a 2 0 to the Rossoneri away in Turin. Yes, boys. As my manager celebrates on the touchline. And for the final chance of the game, Torino uh, would, would get through here. Jalic would swing in the ball towards Iago Falke, and his shot on the volley would beat Gianluigi Donnarumma. He goes to pick up the ball to start the game again, but this was basically the last kick of the game anyway, as Torino get themselves a consolation goal to make it Torino 1 Milan 2, and that's how the game finished as well. But, so uh, we do get the three points away in Turin, and that does put us back into the European places. Or the Champions League places, should I say. And following that game, we do see some player training here. And uh, the Milan board email us to say that we're not currently on track with our financial objectives, as our objective, as you surely know at this point, was to keep salary growth under 10%. It's currently at 12%. And Marvin Stefania comes to us saying he'd like to go out and loan. And I'd be willing to grant his wish, or I was willing to grant his wish, except for a fact, something that came up later on in this um, in this episode that you'll see, and, and I'm not going to tell you what it is now. But anyway, we do get a transfer up here for Andrea Bertolazzi from Southampton for £10 million, or no, not sure, I think that's £10.5 million, pounds, uh, but we do reject it, as, do, as we reject that international line offer from Ecuador, as we decline to manage Antonio Valencia's national side. And for the second game of this episode, we would go away and face Udinese in Serie A uh, on the back of that victory against Torino, looking to continue our long unbeaten run. I think our last defeat in the league was against Juventus, and that was a few episodes ago. As we travel away to Udine, I think that's how you pronounce the city name, to face Udinese, uh, still in the lead table there following our game against Torino, and uh, I need you to see now the lineups as. Um, this is a game we will be expected to do well in. Udinese not the best side, to be honest with you, and us uh, on a fantastic run at the minute. You know, I think that I think that I think that Juventus game was the only game we've lost in the league this season. I could be wrong about that. But anyway, we get a first chance here as Bonaventura will cut inside, find Baca. He would turn, shoot, and his shot would be saved by Carnesis, 
turn around for a corner as it stays at nil nil. Udinese would then have an opportunity here. As the Udinese man keeps going and going, and his shot is saved by Gianluigi Donnarumma down low after a corner. And then we would uh, retaliate here. Ball from Pellegrini inside to Baca, who shoots down low and scores as well into the bottom corner to make it Udinese nil. Milan won just shy of the half hour mark as uh, the Rossoneri take the lead here following uh, a fantastic finish from Carlos the Conquistador, he, or Mr. Reliable as he is apparently sometimes referred to as. I like to call him Carlos the Conquistador, but as the Colombian gets another goal in Serie A this season, slots it past Carnesis following the assist from Lorenzo Pellegrini and slides down on his knees and prays above as is his t signature goal celebration. And Udinese would have a chance to equalise there, but the shot would be saved by Gianluigi Donnarumma. And uh, in, and then we would try and double our lead here with Kuchika finding back, but the shot would be saved by Carnes as, as he keeps the side in the game just before half time. Uh, Suso will swing in this corner here, it would be towards Daniele Rugani, but his header will be saved by Carnes as it stays at 0 0. And then, and then into the second half, then Udinese would have a shot there, saved by Donnarumma, but the rebound will be saved by Donnarumma again onto the post, back off the body of Donnarumma, and cleared by the defender to keep it at 1 0, to keep our lead intact as we so nearly conceded our, our lead there. And then uh, Albert, Adalberto Peñaranda, on loan from Watford, would have an opportunity there. Header would over, go over the bar, though. And as you see there, Giacomo Bonaventura, with a tough tackle, went down clutching his ankle, has gone off injured, and I spent this time looking for somebody to bring on. He ended up bringing David Pino, even though he can only play on the right. He's good enough, I suppose. Uh, so then... Uh, Udinese would come forward again. They would strike past the defence and that, and their Udinese man would slut, would power the ball pa into the bottom corner past Gianluigi Donnarumma as he makes it Udinese one, Milan one, and uh, it's just typical of our of our um, defending right now. You know, we haven't. I don't think we've been the the, the solid defensive unit that uh, the fact that we're the best defence in the league has shown we have. We give away poor goals in the last episode against Cagliari to cost us the victory and here against Udinese as well uh, but we would try and regain our lead here as Andrea Bellotti off the bench would slide in Andrea Bertolacci who would shoot but go just wide of the post past Carnesis as it would remain at 1-1 and then Lorenzo Pellegrini would find Bertolacci back into David Pino turn aside to his right foot shoot but it would be saved by Carnesis as the Frenchman is denied by the Udinese goalkeeper and not the opportunity to give us back the lead but uh Suso will swing in this corner here, towards the centre, be headed away by the Udinese man. Back to Suso, who will get the ball in with the left foot, in towards Bellotti, whose header will go just wide of the post, as uh, uh, as Udinese does do clear the danger. And into, the, in, into injury time, Udinese would have a final opportunity shot, saved by Gianluigi Donnarumma, as it finishes Udinese 1, Milan 1, an exciting game away in Udine, Udine, but in the end, it would finish 1-1, as we do drop two points away from home. And as you saw there... Giacomo Bonaventura sprained his ankle in that game and will be out for four weeks. So the reason I didn't want to loan out Stefaniak is because he's going to be our starting left winger from now on up for the next four weeks while Bonaventura is injured. And, of course, um, Niang still has another three months on the treatment table from his ACL injury. As you see, we rejected transfer bid there for Davide Calabria from Real Madrid. And we got a, uh, and we got our youth squad monthly report here as we do release these two guys. We'll keep Valier Valerio Costa in the team. And... Um, Stefania does come back to us again, saying he'd like to go out on loan. And I plan on loaning him out next season, as, a, as of course, as you know, uh, Paul George's and Tep is going to be coming into the site on a free transfer. So uh, Stefania is really going to be surplus to requirements next year. So we're planning on loaning him out then, uh, in the summer. Uh, and we do get another, and we do get our monthly scheduling updates from uh, Greece and Italy. We do sign that guy there, and Fabio Bruno, and we keep on scouting this individual. And we do have a monthly scout or not a monthly squad report as we enter the month of February. Uh, I skipped past deadline day, didn't any, do any coverage for it because I didn't really do anything on deadline day. I didn't really have anything to do. Uh, this is a good Milan side, and I think the squad that we have, which is gonna, which is what we're gonna have to deal with up until the end of the season, is go is going to be enough to uh, allow us to challenge for the league title, which is what my main oh get a uh, goal is. My primary goal is to get us Champions League foot, or Champions League football, and currently we're on the Champions League places, but uh, we're not now. We're in fourth place uh, as of the start of this game against Sampdoria, but we're what we are only a couple of points behind. Uh, anyway, uh, we would uh, face Sampdoria at home uh, in in at the San Siro in Serie A 
as we look to uh, to continue our yet another yet an unbeaten run. I'm not sure how how many games it is. I will check that for you guys, and I will find out for you guys in the next episode, uh, which has some important games. I'll, I'll let you know that for sure. But for the first chance of this game, Luca Antonelli will swing the ball into the box towards Andrea Bellotti, starting ahead of Carlos Baca, as this was just a few days before a crucial title clash with Napoli. So I rested a few names in this starting eleven. Bellotti started ahead of Baca. And he repaid my faith in him by opening the scoring here after less than 10 minutes as Antony, the left back, swings the ball into the box. But Lottie gets his head in and the former Torino man, the man who we signed in the summer from the uh, Turin side, heads into the back of the net to make it. One, Milan won Sampdoria nil as he gets his fourth goal in Serie A this season, which isn't bad considering Bacca has been our starting striker. Anyway, Dennis Prayet would get the uh, ball to the box here towards Fabio Quagliarella, whose header would hit the post, and then Luis Muriel with the side netting as Sampdoria failed to equalise there, as it is Milan once Sampdoria nil at half time. In the second half, then, Sampdoria would come forward again with Luis Muriel, who shall be saved excellently by Donnarumma on the stretch, uh, and then we would have an opportunity here from this throw in originally, as uh, Honda picks up the throw in, turns inside into his right foot, crosses the ball into the box towards Andrea Bellotti, and Andrea Bellotti gets a brace of headers in this game to make it Milan 2. Sampdoria nil and put us on the way to three points at the San Siro. Following that uh, disappointing draw away against Udinese, uh, we would look to get back to winning ways here, and it looks like we would be heading in that direction as Andrea Bellotti, the I think it was ten million pounds or so we we that we, that uh, we spent on him from Torino. Well, he well he uh, he's been worth every penny so far. He's gotten important goals like the two today. Fifth goal in Serie A, that is. And we would have an opportunity there, but unfortunately Stefaniak's volley would be saved by uh, Viviano, as it would finish Milan to Sampdoria nil. So following the game, we have some more player training, and uh, that more or less brings an end to today's episode, guys. Uh, just uh, one or two more things. Uh, as you see, Suso does accept the contract we offered him. I don't know if I even remember to show you, that, show you guys that. And Pasalic came to us saying he wants to play in the next game. Anyway... This is how the league table is looking. We are two points behind Roma, who are top of the table, but we have a game in hand. So we could potentially go back on top of the league in the next episode when we face fourth place Napoli. But if four, but if Napoli beat us, they'll overtake us. So that's going to make it a massive game. And that's in tomorrow's episode. It's going to be a fully live episode because we take on Napoli and also Lazio, who are currently in sixth. So make sure to comment, like, subscribe, and I'll see you for the next episode of the Milan Career Mode very soon.